You're listening to Maximum Medicine Radio with host Doc Martin. Stay tuned in or call in. You won't want to miss what's happening next. How do you step into your maximum potential? How do you connect your spiritual drive with your physical path? Stick around as Doc Martin takes listeners on a journey through the seen and unseen, the accepted and the unbelievable. Get ready to meet the maximum you the world needs on Maximum Medicine Radio with Doc Martin now. Hi, everybody. I'm Doc Martin, Maximum Medicine. So we're going to do something a little bit callers, but my guest today is got talents that need to be showcased. So um, I know we've got a caller on the line already. Hang on. We're going to do some intro first, um, then we'll get to you. So I think maybe Taylor, Ju- uh, my guest is Julie Ann Evans from Melbourne, Australia. So it's from the United States, she's uh, tomorrow time. Isn't that weird? <laughs> it's weird to me. <laughs> anyway, she's tomorrow. We're today. But anyway, she's the future. How about that? Well, somewhere along the line, we got connected. Perhaps it was her assistant, Taylor, who sent me an email. But um, Julianne has talents of being able to see people's the source of their trauma, of their pain, of an imprint that's been there a long time, and somehow bring it to the surface and help it be released. We're going to talk about that a little bit, um, but I want to say that her talents are such that the Institute of Noetic Science is on to her, and they're going to be connecting with her and trying to figure her out, or at least put her in that category of things that need science to catch up with the mystical. Julianne, welcome from Australia. From Welcome from back from the future. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. Thank you so much for your time today. It is so great to be here and to be speaking with you. So you have a talent that you've had since you were young. Can you tell us about it? You may not have known it was a talent then until you got older and looked around and saw that you did stuff nobody did. Tell us about your gifts. Okay, so you've described it perfectly. Uh, I figured everybody thought the way I did and everybody could read things the way I did. So being humans, being a bit of a white knuckle ride because people were not like me. And since I've started putting this work together, um, I, I now can see what I have access to. And I really believe I've been given a gift and I'm just the vessel for it. But I feel we are all the same. And everything I'm talking about today, everything I have access to, everyone out there has access to but it's just lying dormant and I truly believe it's from hundreds of years ago when we lived in tribes we would come to somebody like me and it was completely acceptable and somehow it's sort of been eradicated from our belief systems or our sense of power but we can ultimately heal ourselves of anything and the goal of being human is heaven on earth and it's on offer to everyone, but it's dependent on consciousness. So when people are in their unconscious pain, they can't access it. And I truly believe this is why COVID came, was to create this awakening of people getting in touch with being in an emotional relationship with themselves and the world around them without fear and without externalizing the need for relief because everything you need is inside you. So the greatest thing about what I have access to is I can get a read on it. So we can speed up the healing process quickly because if I can just take a minute to explain to the listeners yes, what, yes, what, what it is. So energetic clearing is basically... I can get a read on the unconscious blockages and they're developed in the first six years of life 
when we feel everything intensely, but we don't have language and we're very dependent on our primal caregivers and their belief systems and their understanding and experiences of the world. So what will ultimately keep us alive in the first half of our life will often hold us back in the second half of our life because we're not really living our truth. We're living a belief system that was sort of handed to us and it's not what our soul has come to earth to explore. So no two humans are the same. Everybody's a snowflake. So there's no one way for everyone to live. Everyone's purpose on, of being on earth is to evolve and to grow and to understand themselves, but they've all come here to learn certain lessons. So the unconscious, those first six years when I work with clients, I can tell their unconscious is blocked because the language is the same. And they'll say to me, I feel stuck. I feel something is missing. I can't get relief from this feeling that I don't understand. I feel broken. I feel alone. I feel overwhelmed. And it's just the same language over and over. And what it is, is they can't access that language in the unconscious because it's not there. So I can go in and get a read and, and give them words that wouldn't necessarily mean anything to me. But as we know, the truth will set you free. And I'm getting information from somewhere. I don't, I don't know where, but it's like a download and it will create an awakening or it activates an awakening, which when you're on operating from your unconscious, which we all do apparently 95% of the time, we create our reality from our unconscious. It's on the right side of the brain. So people will experience what they call invasive thoughts and um, dysregulation, which means you can be walking down the street feeling great and then all of a sudden you're remembering a window that you broke when you were seven or a fight you had with your parents and you're enraged. That is the unconscious on play. It becomes invasive. And that's the thing that makes people dysregulate because they feel like they're going mad or something's going wrong. But when we clear the unconscious with language, and essentially I feel what I do is sort of put a street sign on for the person to head to the right neighbourhood and once they have that information, they go. The, the consciousness moves to the front of the brain. So when you're operating from the front of the brain, you're conscious, you're present, and you're no longer in fear. So you can explore feelings because everybody thinks negative emotions will kill them or they won't survive or if they start crying or feeling the sadness or the loss, they won't get out of bed. And there's this really limited belief about us exploring being uncomfortable. But, the, you know, that's where the magic lies. The, the magic lies in what you're resisting. So <laughs> the thing is everyone can be having my reality and whatever is coming up to be healed, it's ultimately from those first six years so that you can reprogram yourself not only into extreme health mentally and physically, but your time on earth, you can be living your truth and living your authentic life without question, without fear, without debilitating, um, overwhelming, negative feelings that just feel like a monkey on your back daily. And that need for relief then gets removed. And that's what addiction is, if you think about it. We all have different elements of addiction. And what is it? We're trying to get relief from the human existence. But that's not the point of being human. We're here for a short period of time. All is on loan. We're not taking anything with us. We're here to have a relationship with ourselves and with the world around us. But nobody teaches us this. And particularly not at school, we get taught about the history of the pyramids, but we don't get taught how to understand ourselves, how to have relationships, you know, and then we go out into the world and it becomes success or failure and we live from those limited beliefs. And when that happens, if people feel like there's something wrong with them 
or they're broken, there becomes a lot of shame and they don't really get the help or the support they need because ultimately people are afraid of abandonment and what if somebody rejects me or I get judged or I get made fun of or I get punished for demanding to have my sensitivities and my needs met and all this stuff starts to accumulate. So the point of the work I'm doing is to get people to emotional freedom and really what I'm doing is just getting the pebble out of your shoe. You can walk when you have a pebble in your shoe but it's uncomfortable. It doesn't have to be. Life can be everything you want it to be, but this is your your life is your spiritual journey and every day you get a chance to start again. So if you don't get it right today, you can get it right tomorrow or the day after. There's no success or failure. We're just here to fall in love with ourselves and our lives and that's the goal of the work that I'm doing. Mm, wonderful. So before we take a caller, Julie, tell us how people can reach you. And then when this show is archived on the and in uh, on the YouTube, it'll have the link so people will be able to see it again. Um, tell us how people can reach you. Great. So if they just Google the Energetic Clearer, I have a website. And I have an amazing assistant called Taylor who will get back to them straight away. And we are based in St Kilda, Melbourne, Australia. So like you said, we are ahead of the States and Europe. Yeah, we're in the future. (laughs) So the energetic energetic clearer.com. Yes, the energetic clearer. And uh, the website is there and you can reach out and Taylor will get straight back to you and we can get sessions. But the sessions are one hour. And what we do is, look, the brain and the body don't know time, right? So when people do traditional therapy, traumas are getting obviously activated to be made conscious so they can work with it. But the, they, they get the body then thinks it's happening in real time. And that's the block I see with traditional psychology is that then it's sort of like, okay, now your time's up and you can't stay in touch with them. So my model is to make sure it gets moved to the conscious brain and I haven't had one failed case. So I'm extremely confident that people get off the phone feeling like they've had 10 hours sleep Often people have spontaneous physical healings. I work with hospitals and psychologists in Melbourne because the doctors can't explain how I'm getting the results, but they don't question it because we had a massive lockdown here for two years. So mental health is very, very severe and very highly developed in Melbourne. So, um, I, I, you know, there's I, I've come across one of everything. So there's nothing I can't come across, I can't fix, but... I feel it's coming from somewhere and my goal is to put the manual together for that particular soul so that eventually it's like I'm teaching them a language so they don't eventually need me when they have that intense emotional reaction instead of going into catastrophizing or fearing or panic attacks they go oh, I remember Julianne talked to me about this. They know where they are in their narrative. And then it becomes exciting to understand yourself rather than terrifying because if, if you don't understand this unconscious stuff, you don't know what your triggers are. So I work very strongly at teaching people where they're getting triggered in a negative way but I changed the story. It's not something bad. This is coming up to be healed for you to learn, to up-level as a soul. And there's a great lesson in this. And as you let go more and more of what is not yours and these belief systems, the wars were not that long ago. So we've all had parents or grandparents that lived through the war that will, it was about survival and it was about terror. And we're in these times now where it's a great time to be on earth and to be living, but we've got these programs that have been their ancestral programs. So they need to be cleared 
as well. But how do you do it? If somebody doesn't give you a manual, you all you know is you're feeling something intensely and you need relief, but you don't have the language. So well, that I is I want to just interject one thing here, Julian, before we go to our caller. Um, for people who are calling in, it's uh, 1-800-930-2819. And you will not get an hour because Julianne is doing a quick hit. And if we have more than one caller, we do want to get to many more people. Um, but this is the beginning. And again, um, theenergeticclearer.com. You can always follow up with Julianne. But Emily, who is our first caller tonight and where are they calling from? Our first caller is Stephanie from Ontario, Canada. All right, we're ready. Okay, Stephanie, Hi. you're live. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Julie. Hi. Hi, I'm Stephanie. So Call. Hi, can you hear me? I can. I love Hi. Canada. How great to be speaking with you. How can I help you today? Oh, well, I'm so thrilled to connect. Um, I saw that I could call him and I'm just really, I just listened to everything you said. It really resonates with me as truth. I would love um, energetically to know anything about myself, my soul, and and what uh, what it is you, you could do. Or if you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to. Okay, great. So I'll tell you, when I do a session with somebody, I ask them 24 hours in advance to think about their priority of healing. So I feel it's not up to me to drive somebody's healing process, but we all know where is the ache. We all have an ache at different times, right? And that may present as how did I get here again? How am I working with this same sort of person? Um how am I getting into this argument? Like there will be a pattern of something presenting that is the priority of healing in your external reality or in your emotional reality that is just making you feel irritated or dysregulated or going naught to 10. When it's a normal emotional reaction for ourselves, it's a slow burn. You know, we all have good and bad days. But when it is the unconscious pain body, it's that naught to 10 and I'm going to smash a window. So um, when I talk to people about where is the ache, what do you feel? And that's usually the starting point of getting to the root of whatever the root trauma is. I believe when we're all born with one root trauma and then there's a couple, which is, it sounds, trauma gets bad press. I think it's a great gift because you know suffering teaches joy we have to be uncomfortable to know when we're in the bliss so we all get born with a trauma that is essentially there to make us up level and then after that there's you know secondary things that have gone on throughout the years so I would say you would need to reflect perhaps on something that is wherever you're feeling stuck or invisible or unheard or there's an extreme sensitivity that keeps getting triggered something where it equals confusion because if you have language you can't be confused and that's the work I do is that when we get into a session we start working out the narrative I receive information the client normally knows the starting point and for sure, I can tell you now, whenever somebody says to me, you know, my husband's doing my head in because he loads the dishwasher the wrong way. It's never about that at all. But it's usually, you know, it's implying there's irritation and there's something to do with male energy that's getting reactivated and all roads lead back to the first six years of our life, you know, and our parents. So I would say for you, if you could reflect on going forward and if you were to consider doing a session to just, you want to be in emotional freedom and unlimited energy. So the, the biggest problem with the unconscious is it makes you feel like you have no energy. You have the flu. You, it doesn't matter how much sleep you get. You're always tired. And particularly for mums with children, 
and jobs and careers and all these different roles, it's just that irritation is like it's bondage, right? So if you can be free of that and just be present fearlessly, you know you're connected to your knowing. And I think essentially when the unconscious is cleared, all the negative beliefs that weren't yours, I'm just getting you back to who you were when you were first born before the humans came in. So you're the all, you know, the child in all of us is the all knowing being and the Buddha who has the answers and the connection to the higher realms. And once you're connected to your higher self, you don't need me because, you know, I'm just a conduit for the information while you're blocked. And then eventually you just start learning the language of the unconscious and you can observe and reflect in the moment when things are going wrong. And rather than getting frightened or confused or overwhelmed, you say, ah, okay, no, I'm in an unconscious moment. What's the story? Who have I been around? Who have I spoken with? Uh, who did I just have an interaction with at the grocery store that was angry that reminds me of somebody from the first six years of my life? It's just understanding where you're getting activated with that unconscious pain and it just wants to come up to be released so that you can be in peace and love and joy because that's your birthright. So Julianne, let me help Stephanie focus in for a minute if we're going to use this time to get started on her journey. Stephanie, do you have a particular ache or something irritant or a pain? Yeah, look, I'm, so I'm listening to that and lots of questions come up, um, but maybe there won't be time for that. So to answer your question, um, what I struggle with, I don't know if this would be in the spectrum of what you do, Julianne, but... Um, I seem to, I struggle with my own mind. I, I, um, I, I guess I, it, I call it hoarding, ten, like I'm going to call it hoarding, but it's not an emotional attachment to, I've, I've tried to get lots of therapeutic help over the years and I don't have traditional hoarding tendencies. Like I, I don't have any emotional attachment to the item. Um, but I, I just, it's a process, it's a meant for me, it's it's a, a sensory overload in the brain and trying to process information. Life it, for me and information, incoming information is moving faster than my brain can process it. I feel like um, it's just really slow. And so things pile up. I get um, really frustrated with you know, not being able to keep up, and and it it uh, it it results in in hoarding in all areas, paperwork, household chores, items. I want to deal with things, but and then and then too, if there's anybody around me, like family, um, like I'm married, so if my husband is around, or or some or there's something on this the calendar, that chaos creates like chaos in my brain and. And then I can't do it. I have I, I can't focus. I have no focus. I totally to... Yeah, I totally understand. I can and I can feel I can feel what you're going through. And I, I'll tell you now, it's temporary and it's completely fixable. This is blocked unconscious stuff that's accumulated over a period of time. So there's a note like uh there's a lot of fatigue around it mentally and emotionally and overwhelm, but it's, it's accumulated over a period of time and it hasn't been cleared. So it's just becoming overwhelming. Like it sounds like you're in a state of overwhelm, but I don't feel there's anything wrong. It's just that there's some patterns that perhaps you inherited or coping strategies, I would say maybe, maladaptive coping strategies you adopted from one or both of your parents when you were young and you haven't been conscious of it and it's not actually working for you but you've kept doing it and so then it's accumulated and accumulated and people I always say I'm everybody's last choice because people only come to me when they've tried everyone and they can't get relief but those things can be cleared very quickly yeah, 
Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's I, I understand. Yeah, and it's very, it must be very lonely and very painful for you to be living with this, but I promise you it's temporary. This is real unconscious stuff, but it's just getting to the program. Like we do things because they serve us. So you have learnt this from somebody. It may have worked for them, but it doesn't work for you. But it's sort of like when you're in an unconscious pattern, and trust me, I've experienced it all. It feels like you just, you're under this rock and you can't get out from under it. And it doesn't matter how much intellectually you try. You're ex you just haven't got the energy or the will and you're lacking inspiration. That's what I hear. You've lost your connection to your true self and your inspiration to feel to feel good about yourself and go, okay, I'm going to get on top of this and it's going to be easy and it's going to be fun and I'm going to set a plan and this is going to be over in no time. So what, what happens yeah. is then we feel we can't surrender to the process because it's gone too far and it's too on top of us. And that makes us feel powerless, which is a really terrible feeling. So it feels like on some level you're fatigued and feeling very powerless about it, but it's not the case at all. I, I can't tell you how many people I've worked with who have told me what you've just said. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm so excited to know of you. I, I will check out your website. Yeah, please have a look. And just, I just want to normalize it for you because you're one person, but Sharon would say the same. We talk to how many people a week with different conditions and people tell me, you know, you're the only person I can say this to. And they tell me this story and I say, well, you're the, the 10th person who's told me that in five days. Like it's really <laughs> these things that we are so convinced that we are the only ones and there's so much shame around it. You're just having the human experience, but I promise you this is all unconditional um, it's all unconscious programming. And once we unravel it, your inspiration, your energy, your solutions, it all comes back because it's not your truth. It's just maladaptive coping to something bigger that you can't put words around. I would say it's like a secondary condition. You know, it's like, why do, why do people have addictions of any sort, shopping or drinking or cigarettes? because it's temporary relief. It's not sustainable relief, but it is temporary relief from something you don't understand. But if we can language it and get to the root of things that you probably haven't thought about in years and years and years, that, that truth then pierces you and brings you conscious and you go, oh, I know what I have to do and all my energies come back and I feel really excited and I feel proud of myself again. Oh my goodness. I can do this. What was I worried about? And it's immediate emotional freedom. So Stephanie, what I'm hearing, and I'm so excited for you, if you connect with Julianne, the energeticclearer.com, she's got help for you. And all your years of struggle and things getting overwhelming and trying to get on top of stuff, but it ends up just being a hoard. I just am so thrilled there's possibility for you. So I really wish you good luck. And Julianne, of course, I thank you for that. Um, but Stephanie, you're going to be in good hands. Thank you. For I look calling. forward to hearing from thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you very much. My All right. Pleasure. So Julianne, let's, let's break this down a little bit. And I want to tell you my intuitions about things that went on. First of all, I can sense that you were actually seeing the overwhelm and the, the spinning wheels of a path that was starting to be formed, but it got, it got waylaid in all of this around and around and around. And then a big, all of a sudden you're in a big pile of boulders. Um, I could feel that you were able to intuit that. Is that accurate? A hundred percent. I get images, I get mm -hmm. words, and it's almost like I can step into that person's 
um, brain or energy system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can feel what it is to be her. And I, I, I can feel what it is to be her, but also I'm getting communication from somewhere else where they're saying I'm being shown this is the earth plane stuff, but really what needs to be cleared is the energetic, emotional, spiritual stuff. And then because the earth plane stuff is secondary, right? Our outside world reflects our inside world. So there's something in her energetic programming that somebody hasn't picked up on that. It's, so she hasn't got the relief yet. So the the thing of hoarding or shopping or whatever it is, it's always a secondary condition as far as I'm concerned because once you have that information, the truth sets you free. You're not confused anymore and you know how to reclaim your power. The other thing I also, you put, you put words to her feelings, even though at the beginning, and Stephanie, I'm going to talk about you a minute here. You put words to her feelings because she wasn't really able at first to pinpoint her ache or her pain. But the more she talked about it, she got clearer and clearer and it came down to um, not being able to get through something. And then it's all piled up and then you have all good intentions. But you put words to it that of her emotional state. So I'm also getting the sense that you can really feel her emotional state around this thing that has bothered her for so long. Is that accurate? A hundred percent. You are reading it so great. I'm so grateful to be talking to a fellow alien. This is really exciting because you get it. (laughs) What planet are we from? Oh my. (laughs) Oh, I'm just so oh, grateful I found you to it that she didn't she didn't actually acknowledge we didn't really have time for her to say you're right you're right you're right but I could feel when you said and you're lonely and then you feel the shame and I could feel all of those you were seeing them chunk 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 and you could just see Anyway, it was, I yeah. I was really, so I'm, anyway, I'm glad to be validated because I really felt you tuning in and tracking her. Um, and what I loved is even though you didn't actually do a session, there was actually a session happening because you were able to say, I see this. I see the pattern. I see the places where it hurts. I see how you felt like you're spun out of control. You've been to 8 million other people before you heard about me. But I'm telling you, this is not so weird. That's not fixable. This is actually something that happens to a lot of people. Sorry, in this case, you're not special, but you are. We can help you. This is not going to be hard and this is fixable so that in and of itself and tell me if you if you sense this in your work even though you didn't do an hour session and maybe it would take a a repeat down the road as well you said something and started something that elicited hope and relief and freedom is that accurate A hundred percent, because there would be so much shame and so much despair that it's unfixable. And I know from working with clients, particularly women, right? We're Mm -hmm. so conditioned to hate ourselves and to be responsible for other people's pain and not put ourselves first, even as little girls, look after your brother, look after your mother, you know, like being a female is hard. And so we all had this shame thing that we're not good enough. We're not doing enough. We're somehow responsible for somebody else's pain and it accumulates in shame. And when you get to shame, you can't love yourself. What I feel is, you know, my work is getting people to fall back in love with themselves and then they just heal. We're all full of love and love is the only energy that's real. So I come at it from unconditional love, but also 
I want to do like Harry Potter for adults. I want everyone to get excited about exploring the darkness and standing up to these challenges because life is an adventure and it's meant to be, it's for living, you know, and you're not broken. And whatever it is, I promise you, I have come up against everything and seen so many miracles. But when I talk to somebody, you so accurately described it, as they're talking, I'm getting a download on what the key emotions are that are sort of buried and and that person can't articulate. And that's why I say the emotions initially because it, it normalises the, per, the person and I do that in sessions. I can say up front that gets them to trust me and to be open that and I can it's feel liberating. It. Feel yeah, it's liberating. Yeah, it, and it gets hard to be heard, even though you didn't speak it out loud. You showed it in your energy, um, and then you know you've been heard. Um, I was just reflecting on how many people I see in my mainstream medicine practice. How many women are exhausted from doing for everybody else, and never stopping and not even letting themselves take a breather to have 15 minutes to themselves. Um, and, you know, well, I have to, or I'm supposed to, and it's expected of me. And, and the burdens are overwhelming. And that, so to think that that can have freedom is really exciting. But the second I think was Sorry, it's ahead. great that to, to to be able to, I think what's great for women too is that to have somebody sit in front of you and say, I see you, you're not invisible. And I think so many women, they suppress their emotional needs and sensitivities because they have to. They have so many responsibilities. They're trying to do the right thing. They're trying to give to everybody but themselves. And what relief to sit in front of somebody that you don't know who can accurately pinpoint what the what the things are that are really driving you in a negative way or that are buried or that are causing you heartache or that you're afraid to talk about because you might get rejected or it might start a fight, to do it in a loving way and to say, you know what, it's okay. It's not always going to be like this. This is an interlude and it's an interlude of learning and we can remove this and you don't have to feel like this anymore. And that gives hope. And that's that's all women need. When women have hope and inspiration, we're unstoppable. You know, I'm thinking, sitting here thinking, where do more women get that or, tr or try to get that space? And they do it with their hairdressers and their nail techs. Yep. I mean, I'll be sitting at the at the hairstylist and I'll be listening to the other clients talking with their stylists about the deepest, most intimate things. And I'm sitting there thinking, I feel I feel a little sad that this is the place that they have. This is the only place they have is when they come I... once a month to get their hair done. And it's not even a real friendship. I mean. The person is is paid to take care of you and paid they have to listen to you, but you I mean, it it is a little bit sad, isn't it? I feel well in Indian scriptures they say a human form is bondage. It's very challenging being human, and the need for relief, particularly post COVID, so many people are having intense internal turmoil that they don't understand and there's this limited belief in society that if you have a partner or you have a mother or a family or a what are you complaining about but mm -hmm. they don't necessarily understand you or see you no. in the way it, it, it's such a personal soul journey that mm -hmm. you saw I feel it's you need somebody like me to come in as your spiritual wingman and just right. love bomb you and say hey no judgment and I can normalize this for you and I can guarantee you this is an interlude. It's not a life sentence. And so many people, you would experience this as well. I wanted to just say this briefly about this umbrella of anxiety. You know, people 
I, I get a saying, I've got anxiety, I've got anxiety, and then they get medication and it numbs them out or sedates them more so they don't actually explore it. But one thing I wanted to say to the listeners today is to just make people conscious that anxiety equals not knowing and the emotions under the umbrella of anxiety, if you really want to figure out how to to get through anxiety, reflect on what is driving that feeling of not knowing. Is it fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, not good enough, fear of judgment, Mm -hmm. consequences of demanding getting your needs met, feeling overwhelmed, um, confrontation, necessary change, or afraid of feeling your emotions and they'll kill you. So we don't we don't explore one that I see in the office is um, I can't let myself get angry because they don't say it in these exact words, but I'll take out everything around me. So you don't ever express your anger um, because you'll, you'll lay waste. You're afraid that your anger will take you to a place where you'll lay waste to everything around you. Um, So I see that a lot in, in my practice, though the emotions of not being able to express something, but Julianne, particularly I wanna... angry Sorry, yeah, for I... women. Yeah, I think oh, for yeah, women, you can't... you're not allowed. Anger, to anger. Angry. You're not allowed to be angry, and ang- anger is really positive. It's a boundary. If if you're getting angry, somebody's crossed your boundary, but you've been conditioned. How how by the time we're five, how many times have we told be a good girl, do the right thing, look after your siblings, help your mom? Like we don't feel entitled to get angry, but it actually protects us as women if we can hold our own emotional boundaries. And that's where a lot goes wrong. If you let the anger go, you're then becoming compliant in in a way that doesn't work for you. And then when you're compliant, you can become abused emotionally, physically, mentally, because you're not holding a boundary and saying, not good enough, get out of my world. You know, I'm... I don't, I don't know how old you are, but I'm, I'm probably older than most of our listeners, but um, I carved my way through um, academia as you, usually the only woman or one of the few women on the faculty, one of the only women as the teachers in the medical school I taught at. And so many times if I were tough or assertive or Um, said no way that's that's not happening Um, you will hold yourself back because you might be called a bitch sorry I I know we're on yes and yes no that is like anyway it sends it sends me Um, but anyway let's talk about something positive for a second no it's so no but that's so valid because so that's still happening in real time right why aren't women being assertive and demanding to have their needs met and how many women are in sadness because their sensitivities and their needs are not being met but they've ticked the box to the outside world they've got the marriage or they've got the job or they've got the house so what have they got to complain about but they're not fulfilled right because their emotional sensitivities and their needs are not being met and that's really what fulfillment is is somebody speaking your language and seeing you and you know for a sensitive person lack of information equals danger if you don't understand yourself around your sensitivities and your needs and what you need to feel safe in the world how do you stay regulated Mm -hmm. yeah well let's I want to spend we probably I'm going to say we have a little bit maybe 10 minutes or so left so I want to see what you've explored and um, what your take is on where have you sensed um, or discerned the places that you're getting these downloads from? And, you know, do you have um, a sense of a human being who's passed on who's telling you something? Do you have a sense of... um, where, do you have any sense of where, and maybe it comes from multiple sources, but can you talk a bit of what you have dug into to see where your information comes from? 
That's a great question because Taylor and I laugh about this all the time that we think there's a team of a thousand that we can uh -huh. access because sometimes I honestly don't know, but um, Taylor is my greatest witness because she will say, I'll see your eyes change or your voice will change and she can pick when there's different energies coming through and it's coming from different sources. But for me, it's very spontaneous, but I can feel it's different energies all the time. So mm -hmm. I would do, I mean, I think sometimes it, I, it's obviously just the ancestors or the, or the um, guides of the people that are being sent to me. So that's what I because, wanted to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I feel it's just, um, I'm so just their like team a shows up to whisper in your ear. Uh -huh. Yeah, there it is. Great. You've nailed it. That's what it is. Whoever the person is. And because I didn't advertise and I'm not on social media and I only started a website and an Instagram this year. So I was very underground. I had made a commitment with spirit that if people found me, that meant they were being sent to me by spirit and I, it gave me confidence to heal them. And people came in from all over the world. I don't know how it even worked, but there was not one failed case and it was guaranteed. So I'm certain that there's a team of people connected to that person that finds me, who brings them to me. And then either it's them or they're organizing somebody from the other side. Cause as we know, life is eternal. You know, we leave the human form, but you know, we're still living in a different dimension. So people are coming through and giving me insights and informations. And the Instagram that I started, all of that is channeled. I would go and have a coffee across the road and I almost feel like I'd leave my body. And then I'd come to and there'd be four pages of writing. So I think there's all sides of uh, different sorts of people working through me from the other side, handing the information over at this particular time on earth because it's needed. So I just want to share a, a story with you. I don't know if you remember back in, I'm going to say it was in the 70s. Um, I don't know if you remember the Seth books that Jane Roberts channeled. Yes, um, I was watching somebody channel Jane Roberts last night on TV. That is, I they Ms. were my Wild? first. Book. Okay, we're having a woo woo moment. Oh, I loved, yeah, I love Riz Mirza and he he channels her. And I was watching a channeling session, and you, everyone go on YouTube and watch it. It's extraordinary. He channels her from the other side, and she talks about her experience of channeling Seth in the seventies and. It's an amazing thing to watch on YouTube, but those books are so powerful. Well, I uh, met online anyway. I haven't met him in person yet. Uh, a gentleman, John Friedlander, who was in her um, channeling group back in the 70s and physically with her and then subsequently studied and talked with Seth, who, and you were talking about thousands of people coming together. Seth is a multidimensional um intelligence so multiple what entities um just the way uh esther hicks talks with abraham just the way yes is it sheila forgetting her last name channels theo um but anyway so he's going to be on the show um i'm hoping in december i have to finish reading his book but the idea that we have multi-dimensional intelligences that are presenting themselves at the same time and just and I was going to take this a little further in my thinking and you chime in just as we have multi-dimensional selves and there is parts of our consciousness that are existing in different realities at all the time I can just imagine we have different facets of source all these different energies that each have an intelligence so they present perhaps as different entities that just come together and then you can get this whole conversation from multiple sources coming at you with different perspectives and insights and it's just to me it's exhilarating what 
wisdom and intelligence exists in the unseen world? I think it's unlimited and everyone can access it. But I think there's like an inner technology that's blocked due to unconscious. So mm -hmm. when you're in consciousness, people, everyone can receive the downloads the way yeah. I do. I just have it highly developed for whatever reason, you know, my soul's at a certain level, I guess, and I just have it highly developed so I can teach it. But everybody um, can access these higher dimensions if, you know, if they're open to it too. But in order to do that, there's a lot of limited beliefs that have to be released from that unconscious programming that it's not possible and that magic doesn't exist. And there's so much on offer. Look, I, it happens to me. I, whenever I get a lot of information when I'm in the bath, <laughs> when I'm in water and I live across the road from the sea, but in the winter time, my girlfriends will call me and say, are you having a bath anytime soon? Cause I've got some questions and I can just get, so much information so quickly and I think everyone can do this you know like why, well here's why another here's another thing I was thinking about um in order to be human to be individual we have to be separate that by nate by very nature of being human and being an individual we are we have boundaries we are separate because we've defined an ego and a personality. But when we can drop those boundaries, and the easiest thing is when you're in the bath, you're probably quiet, your mind is quiet, and you can just tap in meditation, mindfulness, walking in nature. When you drop that boundary, then you're not separate. And yes, then you can taste and touch yes. and hear and feel. Does that sound right to you? Yeah, that sounds incredibly accurate because I know in people who go to Buddhist retreats and they say they get handed a broom and they have to sweep a six foot by six foot patch of floor for two hours and it's moving meditation. So think about how many times you're feeling off and you just get up and do your housework and everything sort of comes to you mm -hmm. because you're just not, you're not ruminating anymore. You know, ruminations, it's a big part of everybody's life. You're just going over and over old stories and if things have gone different. But if you can just be present and let go and surrender, there's a great saying, I surrender, please help me. The amount of times I've said that and the information just drops into my head. And, you know, I have ancestors and family that have crossed over and I feel them really strongly. I don't have grief over the loss because I've learned the language of the spiritual connection. Yeah. yeah, and they're helping me better than they ever could when they were in a human form because yeah. they don't have the, the problems of their mental health or their ego or any. They're in pure conditional, unconditional love now. And that allows me to be really confident that, I have a team and so I can be fearless on the earth because I'm protected. I've been shown over and over and over and I'll get the messages, you know, uh, if it's somebody who used to smoke a lot. It happened to me two nights ago. I was on my couch writing in my diary and my whole lounge room filled with cigarette smoke and I knew it was my father and it was mm -hmm. close to my birthday. So, you know, I can be open to the communication rather than, the grief of the loss. And I think that's what happens to a lot of humans too. They're very terrified of how debilitating grief and loss is, which it is, but you need to learn the language of then having a relationship with that person in a spiritual form. And when we're present, you can receive everyone. Everyone can do what I do. And I'm just going to put a plug in for what I say, probably on every show, get out in nature. Because yes, you can get away from that sensory overload of our technological world and connect to the very wisdom of the earth and the nature beings and trees and grass, then just being there can quiet your mind and then then your messages come. 
very effortlessly. I, I live across the road from the beach and when I sit, I walk along the shore and it and people just come and talk to me. I'm just receiving downloads the whole time to any solu- like any solutions mm-hmm. I might need will come very quickly. But also, yeah, it's such a high vibration, right? The peace and animals, oh, spending time yeah. with your animals or just taking the time to look at a tree in your neighbourhood, really mm-hmm. look at the bark and the leaves or watch a sunset or a sunrise. You know, how can you not be inspired and feel blessed to have this life when you feel that magic? Yeah. Well, Julianne, we've got to close. Um, Oh, I'm so sad. Julianne Evans from Melbourne, Australia. You can find her on www.theenergeticclearer.com. She can break open those stagnant pathways. And for the first time ever, you will find freedom. And as she said, she gets these channeling things. She's the vessel for amazing power. And I ask you guys to hook up with her because she's got some great gifts and she's connected and we love that. And Julianne, thank you so much for being on the show tonight. It was so nice to have you here. It's such an honor. Thank you. I'm so grateful to you for giving me this time today to speak to everyone. And I'm grateful for you understanding my work. I'm so I love it. I love somebody it. Somebody gets it. So thank you so much. We need and more of this. Emily. We need more of this. So thank you. Everybody, I'm Doc Martin on Maximum Medicine. Thank you for being here. And this show will be archived and when you'll be able to see the website written down when Emily does the edit. So you don't have to totally remember, but it's theenergeticclearer.com. Thank you. Good night. You've been listening to Maximum Medicine Radio with Doc Martin. Tune in next time while the doc talks health, spirituality, and the impact your beliefs have on every part of who you are, body and soul. Doc Martin unpacks the challenges we face as human beings and teaches callers to open the door between the scientific and the mystical. To learn more about Doc Martin and Maximum Medicine, visit www.sharonmartinmd.com.